Um, again, we were scheduled to have uh, a meddling power lifter who represents Guam so proudly. We're talking about Anthony Big Tone uh, Solace. I don't know. Was it you, Bree, that interviewed him? Uh, yeah, but Jason and I interviewed him. Yeah. Um, it was for a Super Bowl uh, special we were doing. Yep. Right. He's a Patriots fan, right, or something? It was a, it was a Patriots versus Make the Rams. Sure it's right, <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. And and he <laughs> he's a very, very. I mean, if anybody has ever seen the many stories we've done with Big Tone over the years, I mean, he is all about the kids. You know, he works mm-hmm. down yeah. at Adeloupe. I mean, he yeah. really, really wears Guam literally he on works, his. Did sleep. you say he works down at Adeloupe? I believe so. He, he works. I think he works at the LT. I think. He, I, I think. No, he I don't works think in, he works for Adeloupe. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Jay. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. Uh, but you know, he's he. He is about as proud as Guamanian as you can. He want, he projects a positive message. You know, he's, he, I mean, despite the fact that this guy can probably lift like three times his body weight, he is a huge teddy bear. He's the nicest guy you're ever going to meet. He's super funny. And it was amazing because when you guys were doing that interview, he sent me a note and he's like, hey, man, is there any way I can push back my interview? I've got this unbelievably splitting headache. Right, you know, I can't right. even hear myself think. Yeah. And so I wrote him back. I was like, yeah, absolutely. You know, like, you know, we'll take you on whenever you can. Please rest up. He's asking for prayers right now. Um, and then he actually said, there you go. Yeah. Chris Big Tom. Actually, yeah. He's yeah. A, I mean, huge dude. And there's a post here. He goes, um, I don't need my results to know mm-hmm. I caught COVID. Yeah. Tonight while I was eating dinner, I lost my smell. Then I lost my taste. I'm here though. And I'm going to kick COVID's ass. I have the symptoms fam, but someone I believe that I got it from didn't show symptoms. So be safe out there. But you know what? I think he it was he the, sent it was me the previous post though. When I saw yeah. the previous post, uh, do you see that one? Uh, is this where he's in the hoodie? Uh, and yeah. What does it say? Yeah. Uh, once I get my results, the world go. will know if I have COVID or not. I feel that during a time like this, no matter the results, the world should hear what I've been through physically and mentally. Mm-hmm. I don't know what this sickness is, but if a person like myself, who's always active and hungry, to have both taken away from them, I can only imagine. What this can do to an older person mm-hmm. who is ill. I, when I saw that, that's when I, I messaged him first. Yeah. And just, you know, prayers to him and his family. And, and then, of course, I messaged Chris. And I'm like, Chris, we got to we gotta talk to him. And then and I see. messaged him. And, he, and I <laughs> <Okay>. was like. <laughs> and then he messaged me this morning. And, 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 no, and you know what? And when, when I was coordinating a thing with him this morning, he sent me a, a I saw the incoming voice message from Big Tone. Right. And it goes only two seconds. And he goes. And, you know, he goes, thanks, man. I just feel like crap. And it was not the same man. Yeah. And it's so it's not the same happy, proud, right, right, engaging right, person right. that we're used to dealing with. I mean, he sounds very, very ill. So please, everybody, send some prayers upstairs for Big Tone. And, and he really appreciates it. Yeah, we're praying for you. Yeah. And he was and uh, he was just so and I don't want to say excited, but there was he didn't even consider it. I said, Tone, man, you are somebody. I think you would just power lift COVID-19 and flip it over your head and go and jump up and down on it, right? Because that's what you do. He's an influencer. But to hear that he was really suffering with this illness, I mean, even though he was sick, he was like, Chris, I'm there. What time? I'll go on. People need to know that, you know, I'm young. I'm strong. I know other people who are strong, maybe not young, but uh, they're getting hit hard by the COVID. And so, uh, you know, we really wish a big tone and, Everyone else, because a lot of young people are, are catching it, you know? Mm-hmm. And there's also so many people out there like Tone, like some other people I know, who went and got tested because they felt like it was coming on. They're sitting here waiting for their test results, but they're dealing with full-on COVID-19. So there's a gap when I ask public health, are we missing something? Because we're trying to play catch-up. Meanwhile, the world is just, it keeps going. World don't stop. World don't stop if public health can't run enough tests in a day COVID don't stop COVID keeps coming yeah. and this is an example why so we have a man who believes he has COVID and you know I mean God he's a bright guy I'm pretty sure it's a Google it's a first page Google but he doesn't have the results and you know I don't even think he feels he needs them and so our thoughts are just with a uh, big tone and, and everyone else you know and, and we kind of saw our seventh fatality it just came and went and there was just so much news after that but again this is this guy on this ventilator was not an old man. Thirty four years old. Right. Thirty four year old gentleman. Thirty four years old. That's ten years younger than me. Well, eleven, but 
can, can I ask you, can I, you know, I was thinking about something this weekend when, when all the stories were coming in, you guys kind of touched on it earlier, right? I'd like your, your opinion, you know, as, as people who document, you know, Guam history, right? Is the nature of the problem we have here on Guam, and, you know, the governor said this morning, you know, about it seems like people just for whatever reason are not abiding and adhering to her stay-at-home directive. To me, it seems like a spectrum, right? Like, like when it comes to me, right, I'm a software engineer, so my b big thing is solve the damn problem, right? right? And to me, it seems like it's some sort of spectrum. Right? Either people don't know, don't understand, or don't care. Right. And which, the, which of the which of those no, three no, boxes no, no. would you, you put what, it in? What's dangerous here, Jay, is that people do know, they do know, mm. but they're just trying to turn this into "we hate the governor," "burn your mask," "go out there," "open everything a thousand percent." That's to me what's really. So from your vantage, from your vantage, it point, it's, it's not, awareness is not the problem. No, right? people yeah. are aware. They know, but they just want to be knuckleheads and they want to be rebels and they want to talk about constitutional rights. Yo, the Constitution doesn't even really apply here. Newsflash. And I just think it's it's these people who are turning this into some kind of Republican Democrat thing. I mean, God, you, see, you guys know we're critical. We're going to ask tough questions. But at the end of the day, like, I don't want my family to get sick. I don't want you guys to get sick. I'm going to wear a mask. I'm going to do what I have to do, not just for me, but for you guys, because that's how we are. We are like this, okay? We cannot be like this. We have to be like, you know, I mean, not literally, but we're all intertwined together. From, from six feet away. Yeah. <laughs> Bree, I think, has some interesting thoughts on yeah, this. How, how would you think about that? Like, what, what, what really is the foundation of this problem and why people are not doing what we have to do? I think it's a combination of, um, of everything. You know, people who who argue, you know, I should I have to wear a mask? And then I think there's also maybe some people who feel like, well, I'm young and I'm going to get over it. It's just I'm going to get sick for a little bit and I'm going to be OK. NBD, right. no big deal. Yeah. Right. I, you know, and I think that's part of it, too. I mean, you see some of the numbers are they're younger people that that were out obviously gallivanting and, and got sick and yep, yep. then they spread it. Mm hmm. To other people they took it home whether they went on who said it last week a, a booze cruise or or whatever it was they went out and, and then went home and then it just keeps on spreading and spreading and spreading they go to the grocery store they go to the gas station they go to all these different places and so the governor had came to this point where she had to lock it down shut yeah. it down but then there's the other side where it just really frustrates me where we Apparently don't have any damn plans. We didn't prepare for this. Yeah. We're just so we need to order tents now. What the hell? We knew about we, this in September. We weren't the ones who said prepare for the September surge. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. And then we, we have well, well we can only run we've got a backlog of, of tests. Yes, I appreciate everything you're doing, public health. Yes, I appreciate everything the Guam Memorial Hospital is doing. Yes, I appreciate the governor for coming down on everybody. But at the same time, whatever happened to this preparedness plan, this pandemic preparedness plan that we had been talking about since January. Right. What I think happened is once we hit peak or three and it was zero, zero, one, one plus or whatever, everyone was just like, oh, we don't need a plan. We have beat the COVID. They were actually saying we beat the COVID. <sighs> Meanwhile, everywhere around us was seeing second surges. So, you know what, the, and Bree, you're absolutely right. Frickin' zero planning. Or, you know, planning in some parts, but not others. Yeah, and it is what it is. It is Here what it we is. Are yeah, it is what it is. Fighting for our lives. Yes, but so what do we do on Guam? Stay home. Yeah, we settle. We settle on Guam. We settle for a half ass frickin' hospital. We settle for a healthcare mm. system that. We can't even stay here. If someone gets sick, you gotta go beg people to get their car washed. You got to beg people to buy a lunch plate just so you can send your loved one off to get the medical care they need. But guess what? I guess we're okay with that because we keep electing the same damn fools. So this is yet another example of the people of Guam holding the damn bag while our elected leaders' priorities are all... <laughs> and so that's where we're at. And so I get it. There's no planning, right? Right. Am I going to sit here and spend every minute of my day saying, God, they didn't plan, God, they No, because it is what it is, like Sabrina said. We got to do our part. Since when have we been able to rely on the government of Guam? Since when, right? So that's why it's really on us, guys. It's on us. We got to do our part, even if the government of Guam is not doing theirs. 
It's 8.34. Uh, we're going to take a short break here. Uh, it's the link on the breeze, 93.9. Good morning, Guam. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's. We offer affordable rates, online payments, and auto bill pay for your convenience. Plus, gate access daily from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Call us today at 